I'm a big fan of black metal. I cover it a lot on this channel, all of its many different subgenres and offshoots. I'm fascinated by the culture and history of it, and it's produced some of my favorite music in the entirety of the metal world. But there has kind of been this consistency when it comes to listening to black metal for me that I have noticed. And I've spoken one on one with quite a few people about it or in comment sections, but I've never just outright really made a full on video about it. Atmospheric black metal is so fucking good. And today I would like to tell you why. I don't know why I said that like a used car salesman. Oh my, it's the Christmas deal of the year. Do you have a lovable neo-Nazi in your life? Like the video in the next five seconds and we will send a nice Burzum shirt to your doorstep faster than Amazon Prime could have. What the fuck is this bit? Anyways, I personally think that atmospheric black metal is the best kind of black metal and there isn't any right or wrong way to say that a genre is better than another, but I'm gonna just say my perspective on it. Black metal as a skeleton, much like any genre, can kind of become a little bit overly cumbersome and predictable after a while and black metal kind of more than any other metal subgenre except maybe death metal is obsessed with the past a lot of bands like the standard bear and flag bear they like to fly under the banner of the old school style specifically like the early Norwegian bands or some of the copycat bands of like Venom and Bathory and Celtic Frost some of early King Diamond and basically they just want to try to keep the spark alive of that old school sound which is fine although you can kind of run into the issue of it being very predictable and you can kind of just see where it's coming from and after a while you just know what to expect for lack of better terms. Atmospheric black metal aside, the main pull of black metal for me has always been the emotion behind it, has always been the rawness behind it and that in and of itself is very atmospheric even if the music itself isn't that atmospheric. Some of the most raw and bare bones sort of black metal releases can be bone chilling, can be ominous and eerie and evoke so much feeling of paranoia, dread, misery, claustrophobia, Phobia. It doesn't have to be the most technical, it doesn't have to be the most well-versed, it can be very simplistic, but it can still get its point across extremely well. Atmospheric black metal and its subgenres just takes that to the next level, and I have found that the black metal releases that have the most heart and guts and soul to it usually fall under the atmospheric or like the black and folk sort of vibe, because these artists really do put more instrumentation in to boost the sorrowfulness of normal black metal up even more than it was. And I think that's kind of a similar reason to why DSBM is so emotionally evocative. Obviously, it's in the name that it's supposed to be a trudge, a dirge of sorts. But DSBM, I would classify as a form of atmospheric black metal. Black and folk metal, I would consider in many ways an offshoot of atmospheric black metal. Black metal at its core has a sort of antisocial demeanor to it. That is what it prides itself on, pushing you away, being unwelcoming, being cold and bone chilling. And so when you put more in instrumentation into the fold that literally only amplifies that even more, it just hits the mark so much more while also diversifying the sound and making it feel a lot more versatile. And a lot of people feel like atmospheric black metal has to be well produced, that it is spit shine and so it loses some of like the true cult status, but that's not the case at all. I have heard many fantastic atmospheric black metal records that are pretty lo-fi, pretty raw. Paysage de Ver is a very good example of it. That solo black metal project has made a ton of waves over the decades and that pretty much sounds like it was recorded on a blackberry that was down the road in a house in a closet so it's still very much atmospheric it has a lot of field recordings and the atmosphere of it is beautiful i love paysage de Ver. but those albums are certainly not well produced by any stretch of the imagination and i don't think anyone would look at those records and say that they are anything but lo-fi so while you are going to get these records like perennial isolation or ohava's record frozen blue or those like sort of modern records which are very well produced there is sort of an organic feel to them and I think it's very rare to see a black metal project feel overly produced I feel like even if a black metal record is very pretty from an atmospheric department they still have that level of ingenuity to the instrumentation where it feels like it was made by a person and it was very unique and creative and coming from the heart and soul not really that manufactured not that engineered and I don't really run into that many black metal records that feel other Otherwise, and that's coming from someone that listens to a fuck ton of music and gets a lot of music put in front of me. While a lot of black metal takes on the note of feeling enraged, which I plan on doing an entire video about war metal, that's perfectly fine. But when you look at the other side and segment of black metal, it is pretty solemn, it is forlorn, it is sorrowful. So when you take all of these different influences from other things and put it into an already sorrowful sort of genre that has a lot of nihilism and a lot of cynicism, a lot of 
forlorn instrumentation and a lot of very sad lyricism full of anxiety and dread towards the world towards yourself and when you even put on top of that a lot of these being like solo projects so it literally is coming from the heart and soul and mind and body of one person putting their entire being out into their music it just makes some of the best music that I hear in black metal like I said perennial isolation Olhava, Sayor's records are phenomenal I would even put Kekta Rock in that category and even like some classic things I would consider part of that Burzum had a lot of atmospheric tendencies Emperor's record in the night side eclipse while it is symphonic was massively influential and massively atmospheric in its own way one of the best black metal records of all time Agalox the mantle is what I would consider an atmospheric black metal project and while it is kind of heavily debated whether or not Opeth can be considered black metal or not their records are dripping with atmosphere in them and some of my favorite Opeth records that are black metal inspired have a ton of atmosphere to them and I think it creates some of their most creative and fun sounding music and most sorrowful and impactful so basically what I'm saying is if you want to filter out your rage and aggression through black metal there's plenty of music that can fit that bill and they aren't concerned with being atmospheric or pretty whatsoever they want to be tenacious and fierce and that absolutely has its place I love a lot of war metal releases I love like the project conflict but I think revenge is a really good project but coming from the perspective of someone that loves to feel emotion through my music I just cannot get enough of atmospheric black metal and most of my favorite records that I'm going to go for repeat listens or that end up being my favorites usually come from some form of atmospheric black metal and that has just been consistent for me what are you guys opinions of this topic do you like atmospheric black metal or do you prefer the other stuff what are your opinions on this topic I can't wait to hear agree or disagree there is no wrong answer I can't wait to hear it in the comment section down below be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads you know who it is my name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying fair well